Sports, the A&R Room on Sway in the Morning. All right, all right, time for the A&R Room. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you one of the most respectable uh, uh, of A&R people to ever come through the business of music, the one and only, your favorite producer's favorite producer, the one and only, Rich. Nice, 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 nice. Soundboy Round killer, soundboy killer, soundboy uh, killer. All right, and uh, we're doing a special A and R room because we're featuring one of the most successful guys too in the in the past fifteen to twenty years. Um, he's had a, a, a very successful career. Um, he's been responsible for making a lot of hits for the genuine artists in terms of uh, in, in, including Fifty Cent, Lloyd Banks, um, The Game, um, uh, Tony Yayo. He's uh, produced hits for Busta Rhymes, uh, Stevie Wonder. Uh, to you know, a Snoop Dogg, all these different people that he's worked for and worked with, um, and he's here today to celebrate his new project. And I'm happy to have him on the show. Know that he's doing okay, man. This dude is a a a, a, a pillar in hip hop history. The one and only Shaw Money XL is here. Shaw Money yo, yo, XL. 1804 Thanks, Energy. Man. Big Zo in the building. Yes. Sa passe. In the building. Chain oh. on the bike. Okay. Hello. All right. Nobody responded to that. What did I say it at the wrong time? <laughs> no, we just <laughs> always hear. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know if I said it. Am I, a, am I a poser right now? What just happened right there? <laughs> uh, hey, Shy. Um, by the way, citizens, if you got any questions for Shy Money, 888-742-3345. Uh, first and foremost, where are you right now? Where are you quarantining? Um, I'm in I'm in New York. I'm in Long Island. I'm out here on the burbs in Long Island, chilling, quarantining, and going back and forth between here and Queens every day. Between here and Queens, I'm, uh, go ahead. Yeah, because I have a I have a business, so I'm not necessarily like really quarantining. I'm still at my shop serving the community. You know what I mean? So I go to Queens every day to my bakery. And so, what do you? So, how are you are you giving? What do you mean by serving the community with it? Are you are you giving folks bread, or are you just making sure they got bread to eat? Yeah, yeah, because we're essential, so and it's not a lot of um, we're like one of the number one Haitian bakeries in Queens. So every day people want their bread, they want their patties, you know, they want their stuff. The nurses, you know, right. ambulance, every everybody's coming through and getting what they need, and then you know, feeding their, feeding their families as well, you know. Hey, is it a, a different like you know? I know we make. Is it do Haitians make bread any different? Like, is this something specific to Haitian made bread, or is it just you making bread? So let, let me tell you, Haitians are daily bread eaters. They love bread. Like you know, back <laughs> on the island, that's like one of the things that that really carry us over when there's nothing else to eat. So like, people love Sex. eating bread in Haiti. So and um, so we make it a special way that they love and they remember from back home, and it's like a tradition that's been passed down from my grandfather to my mother. To me, my nephew, and my sister, my brother, we all we all bakers. Okay, man. Um, Sean Money is here. Like, if you want to, Rich, I'm gonna let you jump in in a minute. I know, but I know once I let you do that, you're gonna hog the conversation. So I'm just trying to catch up with my friend. <laughs> That's all. We done done so much work together over the years, and when I look at your resume, even you know, being selling over 40 million records worldwide. Uh, co-founded co-founded G Unit. Uh, worked as a VP at Def Jam. Uh, instrumental in signing Two Chains. That's how I met Big Crit was through you. Mm-hmm. Worked as an executive mm-hmm. VP of Epic Records, signing Yo Gotti, discovering Bobby Schmurder. Um, all of these different folks. Um, uh, all of these different experiences that you've had, and you're releasing this album, Chain on the Bike, Volume One. Um. Every like I can name artists and stages in your career where the industry has since morphed into something different. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, you have to mm-hmm. approach music differently, how you sell it, how you market it. Uh, you have to be on the post. You kind of got to be a visionary and know what's coming down the line in terms of technology streaming through everybody's game off dismantled the, min- the music business in a sense. Um, how do you plan to approach getting chain on the bike volume one? exposure differently than what you've done in the past or is it a path you got that you're just going to keep well it's, it's it is a new time for 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 how you market and, and how things happen right now so i'm still learning the new process because it's not like you could just go out in the streets and do what we used to do or or, or you know the other things that we did just being out and about with all this you know social distancing and everything going on you got to market differently 
But my main thing for this is the fact that, you know, I have these new new artists on the album. And when they went and put out their own project, nobody recognized them. It takes a few projects for them to get recognized and a lot of hype, right? So the the the, the way I'm trying to market them is through this album as well, where, where I'm, you know, making sure I'm, I'm approaching radio and do a lot of press and things like that to get it out there, as well as the streaming is doing well. And just, just really making sure they're being out there and they're being heard as well as, you know, the whole project and the body of work. So it's a new way and I'm adjusting, but I'm still putting in that efforts of what we used to do, you know, online as far as advertising and all that other stuff as well. So a lot of these artists that's featured on this on this um, project, um, like, um, let's say, Chronic or Landlord or, or Teddy Andreas or all these different folks have put out Sandy Benjamin. A Billy Yon, who we know. A Billy Yon is dope yes. as hell. Um, yes, he is. Yes, a Billy Yon is crazy. They put out projects. They haven't been able to really make them pop. Are you finding that a lot of artists who are, are you feeling their frustration? Like, what are artists saying? Because it, it appears when you look at Instagram and you look at all these social media platforms and you see these dudes holding up money phones, you know, uh, a lot of the younger dudes with all the chains and they you see them purchasing these expensive ass cars and God bless them if they got it. It appears that everybody's getting paid. What has been your experience? It does. Yeah. My, my experience is I really rather go with the talent and it takes a while for people to really get into it because they're not exposing all the chains and doing all the extra stuff that, that appears to make them, you know, like them and, 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 and really get into their content. So it's it's like I go still with the authentic artist. So people really love music. They tend to go, you know, a little bit slower with catching on, but it's a slow and steady pace that actually gets them to the greatest pace. And that's that's what it matters to me, that the, the quality and the music and the artist is putting out something. So when it really sinks into the people that get a get catch win or take a listen, they really rock with it and then it lasts. And it's not about what the Instagram look is or how he how he's portraying himself in the video. It's actually the, the things they saying and how they actually, you know, getting across in the visual as well, not just making it look like it's a whole fancy show when it's really not, you know, because yeah. these are all struggling artists trying to get on. So, I, you know, that, that that's a part of hip hop that I never was attracted to. They can't make a whole lot of money when they're not streaming a lot. And then right now, in this case, you can't perform. And so you're not getting show money, which could kind of like mm-hmm. substitute for, you know, it, it, it can help supplement your income with show money. But one of the things Heather always talk about is writing, writing your own lyrics and owning your own publishing. And I'm going to play back a clip of something I saw you say that I think if you're an artist that's tuned in to us right now, this is why we always talk about uh, the importance of writing and authoring your own work. Um, here's what Shaw Money had to say about a song he produced 15 damn near 20 years ago the thing that stands out for me in my career is when i i got this machine back because i almost lost it in my divorce and this really meant a lot to me and i used this tool to make this one beat poor little rich poor little rich made me millions of dollars that one record off of something i put in this and made off of this that experience of having that beat in my basement and then going to detroit when i'm hearing it and was like, yo, I'm gonna put this on this. And he just pulled his keyboard out and just had some shit added to it. And then mixed it and took this shit to a whole nother level. Me and Fifth was trying to get right in my basement and we couldn't get it right, bro. But when we went to him, that shit just, I'm telling you like that shit to this day, just ringing that money in. Now, <laughs> shit. <laughs> wow, right? That's right. That's right. That's Yo, all facts right there. Talk about that. Talk to these like you're talking to a classroom of artists, you know, about publishing and, and writing, having your writers, writers share. Why is that important? Yeah, it's very important. It's very important that when you do songs with people, even if you're brand new and you're collaborating, you do a, a split sheet immediately as soon as the song is done, which your share is written out, a little confirmation between emails or texts with the person apart so that everything is documented. Because so a lot of records happen later, and it, it could be two years from now, a year from now, whenever it happens, you just want to make sure you're a part of it because a lot of artists are grabbing stuff off of YouTube now and just catching up later. And it's the game is changing rapidly. And, and if your information is not 
to read it through text, emails, communication, as well as you knowing that you're, if you did the track solely, that you're, was you, you're actually responsible for 50% of this song. Unless anyone adds some contrib- contributions to it, the other artists and whoever's featured is going to have the other 50%, but you as the producer are going to have your share, which is half of the song. So you want to make sure you keep track of that, you keep record of that, and that you, that you know that that's your right. That's not something they allowing you to have. That is your actual right. So you just have to know that going in and not form, you know, the excitement that leads to the desperate decision making. You got to actually, you know, stand your ground and know your value as you walk in, but not play your cards out like you just so stubborn and not knuckleheaded, but don't blow the opportunity. But still, in the same sense, you're walking in knowing if this track is used and it's 100 percent yours, 50 percent of that is yours as the artist is the other 50 percent. So that's what I would tell them. And see, and what that could be beneficial have to be like right now when a lot of people ain't able to generate the same kind of income, you still getting those publishing checks. Mm-hmm. Every quarter. That's right. And right. a lot of people money. selling records off of YouTube. A lot of mm-hmm. artists are finding hits off of YouTube, like these, these little sound likes and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, tight beats. They're finding them, and they're like, yo, I want something that sounds like Future, and then they end up being their hit, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's how it's happening right now. So you can get to these guys just by putting your stuff out there. All right, man. Shaw Money is here, man. You still do? You still say XL, Shaw Money? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Shaw sh- okay, sh- sh- Money <laughs> XL. New new album is called Chain Chain on a Bike Volume One. Um, and yeah. Rich and I, we were having a conversation about a couple of the songs um, last night. We literally were like going through Ramona and, and Too Many and all these different songs. Rich, you want to jump in? Yeah. I, uh, uh, peace, brother. I want to say, um, mm-hmm. man, first salute to all the work you've been doing because as a producer and an a and I know how difficult it is to consistently stay uh, finding new talent, quality, and inspiration of working with artists because sometimes it can kind of sound like Charlie Brown, wah, 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 and everybody's doing the same thing. And, and it really takes dedication to stay focused and, and pluck new talent from the talent pool. So salute to you for that. Um, Thank you. Let, let's talk about this guy, G. Yamazawa, because I'm mm-hmm. familiar with him from my deaf poetry, you know, working with poets, and his name has come up in the poetry world. And when him, his transition into MC, and how, how did you and him create, uh, uh, how did you connect with this guy? All right, so, you know, me always listening to someone that sends me things. My homeboy, Chris Thornton, from the Front Runners, sent me this link in Facebook. And he's like, yo, check this kid out. Yo, this kid is like, he's going hard. So when I checked it out, he had this video, he had this song, and he was going off on it. And when I heard it, I was like, yo, I just shot him a little text, like, yo, through, through the, you know, the um, through Facebook, yo, I like your joint. This joint is fire, man. We, we need to work. He hit me back. And we started start building a little conversation, and then uh, I sent them some music. And that was the first record we did right there. That's on the, my album. And that's from Cold us. Winter just, was the first record you Facebook. did with him? That's the first record we ever did, yo. <laughs> and we did it wow. during this quarantine time. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, I sent it to him, and yo, he sent it back. I said, yo, this, I knew he was going to do that. And I knew he was the truth. So, and I wanted people to see him because, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, he's talented – but he's Asian too, so it's not a lot of dudes out here rapping like that. That's on that that on that, on that level. So he he needs to be seen and heard. So I wanted to make sure I was a part of that and putting him on the project. So because we got a video coming, and I'm gonna spotlight him, make sure they see him. He's not my artist or nothing, but I want the talent to be seen. Hmm. Man, that I didn't know he was. Where is he from? He's Asian. Uh, yeah, he's Asian. He's from North Carolina. I think he lives in Cali right now because he's been going back and forth with me in Cali. And then, um, yeah, and he's Asian. Let's hear it. We're going to play the song, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. Um, this is from the Chain on the Bike, Volume 1, new music by Shaw Money XL. This is called Cold Winter. Uh, let us know what you think. And you got any questions for this, man, music, business, or otherwise, um, 888-742-3345. Oh, winner. That's off the brand new Chain on the Bike, Volume 1. It's out now. Fire, fire. G. Yamazawa, that's his name. Sean Money XL is on the line with us. Um, 
Man, that's uh, something about that vibe. What do you think of it, HB? I love it. It's it's the exact vibe. It's the kind of vibe where if you sitting around and you throw just that track on, you just want to spit bars. I'm encouraging any MCs that's listening right now. That's the kind of track you listen to that you ready. At any point, somebody throw a beat on and want to hear you spit. If you could catch to that, you got it. You got it. I like that. And that's You got all, it. You produce all the music on the album, Sean Money? Yeah, every track, you know what I'm saying? I got some musicians with me, like my boy Jay Boogie. Shout out to Key Cat and Cito, but it's just all me on the, on the production. Dope. That's got, fire. Yeah, that's yeah. that kid Thank got a you. vibe Thank about him, man. We mm-hmm. got DJ Ike um, from North Carolina. Ike, what up? What up, what Ike? Up, what up, Sway, What's poppin'? What Shop. up, though? What's up with you? Yo, Sha. Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. I, I, you. Reaching out to the Carolinas to, to pick up an artist like G. Yamazawa, who, who's been out here in these trenches getting it in. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about, man. We got to, we got, if it's not a cosign from one of us, it's got to be from my artist. So I'm going to stand out and hold them up, you know? Mm. Most okay. definitely. Hey, DJ Ike, man, make sure you get the um, project, though. That's how you support it. Like, we, we, we say how great we think the music is, and then we leave it alone. You got to stream it, download it, do something so it have a return on it. You know what I mean? So that success yeah. could keep yeah. our money back in its bag. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well, what I'm going to I'm, I'm going to get the project, plus I'm going to blast the song out to all my core DJ family and, okay. and make sure that, that we make this one win. Now, core DJ shot money. You know who the core DJs are, so yes, sir. Th- shout you out got, to the core. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they've been at the core of the game for a long time now. That's the foundation. We got nothing but love. You know how many core DJs been up on Sway in the morning? Come on, we might as well be core Let's DJs. Go. Let's go. I, I thank you, brother. I appreciate you, Margo and Phoenix. What are your love. thoughts? Love, love. Hey, Margo. Hey, hey, hey there. Hey, this is Margo B. Uh, Man, I like this. I like this cat. He he uh he has that early 2000, late nineties feel. Like I like I was telling you, boy, man, we could uh, I could throw that on to drive. I could throw it on to clean the house. It's just that kind of track you could just throw on to spit bars. I just like his his art uh, his uh creative. You know, you can tell he's an artist. He's a real artist. I like mm-hmm. him. Oh yeah. Um, so it sounds like he's seasoned too. Like he's been around for a minute. Yeah, like Rich said, he yeah, was doing poetry and all that, so he know how to, you know, get his words out. He know how to really, you know, do his thing, man. He's talented. He's talented. Rich Nice, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. This guy's actually a, a national uh, poetry slam winner, so he's not he's he's mm. familiar with the stage and how to articulate. And it's dope to see him make this transition, you know, uh, uh, right. from from poetry onto music and. You know, some cats can't make that leap. They can't make that transition. So uh, I'm, I'm interested, man. I can't wait to hear more from him. I'm really, really excited to hear more from him. That's what's up. Um, uh, you know, we had um, we had Havoc on the show, and we were talking about the 25th anniversary of The Infamous. And there's a song on this album uh, that features Prodigy called Divine Time. What, you know, what is your re- what can you talk about your relationship with Prodigy? Where where did it all begin for you two? Was it a Queens thing? It began or? From, yeah, it's a definite Queens thing and, and this is this dates back for I had I was living in my mom's crib growing up and he was the first rapper to ever come to my mom's crib when I was in the basement first making beats trying to get my name out. This is like the famous dude coming to the hood because he was going to everybody hood and he was he came to my hood with my boy Busy. And he came in my basement, and, and this, this has been since the 90s. So, uh, like, Prodigy's a rap god to us in, in Queens, like, you know, for real. So we, a lot of respect to him because he really came through the hoods and picked out the new talent, and I was one of them. Yeah. And it's been it's been love since then and, and, and until now. And, uh, you know, we've been working since even when he got the G-Unit, I started producing for him. And even after when I left G-Unit, I still was producing with him. We'll call him, he'll come to the studio, and that was like one of those songs that we were just in the studio. We never did nothing with it, and I had it. Wow. Um, when he came into your studio, did he, like, did he make himself comfortable, or did he clown your keyboard, or did he <laughs> did he look at your equipment? And just, <laughs> did he give you some suggestions? Yo, honestly, you know? I, was, I was like, yo, this dude coming, for one, he coming to the hood. He, he don't know me for nothing. 
he coming through, he passing my mom, saying what's up to my mom, coming in the basement. My my joint had the hip hop vibe though, man. I had I had the posters on the wall, everything. It looked like you knew like hip hop was here. So he saw it, you know what I mean? And, and I wasn't ready though. I think I wasn't ready when I played him that batch because there ain't nothing happened after that. But then I ended up working with him later on with Call Mega and Havoc on Angel Dust. So it just it just was it was ahead of his time with the meeting. Well, this song, Divine Time, is another banger. We're going to um, play this, and it's featuring Teddy Andreas and and then Thanks. how you... And, and Stargella. 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 Yeah, Shout Stargella. Out, yeah, big queens. Yeah. Okay, okay. and they're, oh, everybody's queens. Yeah, queens track. and Teddy, his background from Houston, too, so he he, he he goes all the way from Houston back, back to Queens with it. Okay, hey, so we're going to play this track, man, but I want to thank you for coming on the show this morning, man. Give him a big round of applause. Shaw Money Thank XL. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. man. Absolutely. Uh, Rich Nice, man. Anything you want to say in closing? Yeah, man. Salute to this project, man. It's something that you guys got to put your ears on. You know what I mean? Everybody's looking for new music and new things to check out. This is uh, definitely going in high rotation for me. I love what I'm hearing. Shaw Money never disappoints when it comes to that production. So salute to you for that. And um, this you. week on Wednesday on the A&R Live, we're going to be doing a special Black Music Month rendition every wednesday we're going to do something live with an artist performing live so make sure y'all tune in on the a and r room ag on the a and r room ig 5 p.m eastern standard time check us out and we'll we'll give you more details okay all right thank you rich nice shot money if y'all want to reach him shot how can they reach you on social man yo shot money xl on twitter at shot money motivation on instagram I'm right here, man, and I want to thank y'all for having me. And shout out to Rich Nice because a lot of my blueprint came from him and Trackmaster. So I just need to say that real quick. You know what I mean? Salute, salute, salute. Yeah, that Rich said, give him the check. Say it in the check, y'all. All All right. um. Say it in the check. That check can speak a lot louder. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hey, y'all, citizens, support this Chain on the Bike Volume 1. You looking for some real good music? This is it. 